In terms of his um, communication skills, do you think that he was communicating exactly what the Fed wanted, or do you think that there was a problem in how he communicated? Well, first of all, I, I'm mindful of what Mickey Mantle said about baseball. He didn't realize until he got into the broadcast booth how easy it was to play the game. So we have all this commentary. <laughs> we have all this commentary. And uh, as Dino knows, because he sat in a room uh, for quite a while and ran the New York desk, uh, this is a very complex matter. And uh, you can't satisfy everybody all the time. I was asked the other day, as you know, I'm very fond of Jay's, a close personal friend, but I was asked the other day, what would you give him as a grade? And I said, incomplete. And the reason for that is he's only been at this for a year. Uh, he, as Bill Dudley said, faced a, faces a very difficult task of completing um, the exit, as we called it at the table back when I was there. Mm -hmm. And it's not an easy job. People have gotten hooked on cheap money. And uh, you make easy decisions. It makes you richer if you're a money operator. Uh, things could be a little bit more challenging going forward. So uh, I think he does get a job of incomplete, a grade of incomplete. But that's because he's just gotten started. It's one year. He's a young man, turned 66 today, just a kid. Uh, and we'll have to see how things uh, go through. But the market is so sensitive here because they've been hooked on the opioid of free or ultra cheap money for over a decade now. And I understand their sensitivity. I think you're underestimating the fact that he's not a trained economist. In fact, he has a credit and capital markets background. I think he has better insights than people give him credit for. But what, what should we or what can we extrapolate, Dino, in terms of what uh, the Fed chair has said recently? Should we, should we assume that the Fed now is more comfortable with the idea of an inflation overshoot? And so maybe a lot of the other projections, for instance, for a recession, those things get pushed out longer? Uh, I'm not sure. So first of all, I think Richard had uh, some really good points. Yeah. I agree with what, with what was just said. I think what we should appreciate, though, is that, you know, Powell has shown the ability to pivot, to adjust, you know, to be agile, not to get locked into a position just because he said so. So as, as uh, Steve just said, you know, we went from in a few weeks, actually, from him saying we're a long way from neutral to we're just below neutral to essentially we're at neutral. Now, you know, if you had, a, a, you know, another personality in there, that that adjustment might have taken much, much longer. And the market, you know, you might have been much more stressed uh, during that period. So let's let's give him, the, you know, that amount of credit. I'm not sure that that we have anything to read into whether he's willing to tolerate an overshoot of inflation or not. I mean, I think the Fed has sort of been trying to say, look, our target is 2%. We're not, you know, that 2% is not a ceiling. You know, we can be symmetrical around that. And, you know, right now, I, th I think we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, you know, I think I would point out also that, you know, this is his first year. You know, mm -hmm. Greenspan in his first year had to deal with the crash. Uh, we had Bernanke uh, at about a year or two years, had to deal with the crisis. So, you know, he's had a hiccup. He's dealt with it, I think, well. And let's give him, uh, you know, some time to perform. Richard, I, I just cracked this book on the Fed's independence. I'm a couple chapters into it. But one of the <laughs> points it makes is that uh, we essentially have the Fed around to blame. And that's one of the points of, of, of the Fed even existing, why Congress created it. And you can blame right. it either way, depending on how the economy is going. Is, is, is part of what's going on here a proximate cause thing? Well, the market went down. It must be the Fed. Yeah. Well, one week it's China. One week it's the Fed. Uh, I would argue, and I think Dino would agree with me, because we both served there. This is a steady hand. I mean, compared to what? Compared to the Congress? Compared to the manic depressive <laughs> nature of market traders? Uh, what you want is a Federal Reserve that is sensitive to what's going on, obviously gearing themselves towards creating conditions for full employment and a non-inflationary, non-deflationary environment. Um, it's important that it be independent, that it be a steady hand. I think it is. Uh, there are going to be little blips along the way. But you're absolutely right. I mean, we got the blame when I was there under uh, Ben Bernanke's leadership for having dropped the ball. Alan Greenspan got the, the blame for having dropped the ball on the regulatory side. So it's nice to have uh, the ability to point your finger at somebody else. And my experience, uh, having served in two administrations before I was at the Fed, is Congress likes to point their fingers elsewhere. They never point their fingers at themselves. And the same thing for the chief executive officer. So it's nice to have a piñata, which is what the Fed is in this case, 
uh, to beat upon. As long as they hold together, don't burst open and spill all the candy out to uh, everybody and they do their job. And I think that's what the Federal Reserve does. I like that metaphor, pinata. Um, steady hand <laughs> is a good point. But in terms of the markets, it's, it's interesting to you know that the market's so uh, latched on to this turn uh, that Jay Powell had from October 3rd to the beginning of January. But there's not the notion of the flip side, and that is if he was that sensitive to what the markets were telegraphing in that short amount of time and change his stance to that degree, could we see the reverse if the markets telegraphed again? In uh, a different direction. Yeah, perhaps. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I think that you know the defense should be there to provide sort of medium term, a medium term message to provide you know a path, you know, and not get caught up in the wiggles and piggles of it. So you know, so, so let's just sort of see. I mean, I think that Richard had it right. You know, we, it's too early. You know, if he were to grade Powell, probably incomplete, probably is the right grade. You know, so, so you know, let's see this thing play out. But I, I don't think that he's going to get these sort of you know. Get mark to market, as it were, uh, you know, you know, day by day, just and react to markets. You know, um, one thing I, I did leave out of my report, though, is I think some worthy praise of Powell for transparency. Yeah. Um, he went to the press conferences every year, every, every every meeting. I mean, some people that's sort of controversial. The other thing is there are several reports now that uh, are out that uh, on the banking system that the Fed did not previously mm -hmm. publish that he spearheaded their publication. But my concern here is that he pivoted really sharply. And is it possible you think they're going to have to pivot back if this weakness ends That's up? That's what I was at. I mean, because if the being... markets are, take so much heart in the fact that he pivoted, right? Should should the markets also think that a pivot in the other direction could be in the cards right. if the, if a China trade deal happens? Well, certainly, if it comes if in, th if, it, if, if he has to do it in three months, I, I believe that'd be a blow so, to his credibility. So, so, so yeah, let's, I agree with that. Let's see what the data is, right? You know, he, he's saying we're going to be data dependent. Let's see how the yeah. data evolves, and he will react to the data. And I, I want to make a point here Last because word, Richard. you're saying he pivoted. The market wants to hear or wanted to either force or hear that he pivoted. I, I dissect every single word that's said that comes out either in a press conference or in the statement. I'm not sure it's a pivot. As Dino just pointed out, it's, it's data dependent. If you really dissect the words on the balance sheet, which is very important, I didn't see a pivot there. We never assumed the balance sheet would go back to where it used to be. You can't. Cash in circulation is 1.7 trillion. You've got to have reserves of the banking system. You really can't get that balance sheet below three and a half trillion, in my opinion. I, we assume this all the way along the way. So I don't see any real news here. And I think the market is looking for a pivot. You've translated as a pivot. And again, the game is so much easier when you're in the broadcast booth as opposed to when you're at the table.